Welcome to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And, and we, we are, are the Kings. Kings. Happy Monday, you all. Welcome back for another show of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We want to let you know Marriage Mondays with the Kings is brought to you by our sponsor, Christian Humor Forward Slash Inspiration. This is a group that is designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. So if you are into social media, you have a Facebook, please go and search them at Christian Humor Forward Slash Inspiration. Now, if you are an organist, organization or a business and you would like for your business or organization to be promoted during our broadcast or on KRGN 98.5 FM, please give KRGN a call at 254-213-1588. And as always, we like to open up our show with a word of prayer. And so we ask if you're safely able to do so, please bow your heads and go with us before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today just giving you thanks on the day there, God. We thank you for waking us up on this day, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this opportunity, Heavenly Father, that you've given Shannon and I to be before your people to give them a rhema word on the day there, God. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus you would continue to hold us in the palm of your hands, Heavenly Father. We just come up against anything that the devil has put into place on the day there, God, that would tear down the union of marriage, that would tear down individuals from your presence, Heavenly Father. We come up against any device of the enemy that is set forth out there, Heavenly Father, to take us out of the will of God. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask your prayers, uh, your hands of protection on us, dear God, in all that we do, whether we're going in or coming out, Heavenly Father, whether we're making travel plans, whether we're making plans for other individuals to visit or anything of that nature, dear God, we just ask that you would hold us right now and protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, we lay this country before you. We lay our senators, all our politicians before you, dear God, and we ask that the individuals be able to come on one accord, Heavenly Father, that they do what they said that they would do a long time ago. This is to be a nation founded upon the principles of God, not greed on the day there, God, not money, not getting over on the individuals there, God, but doing what's best for the nation and we're doing what's best and pleasing in the sight of God. So, Father God, right now, we don't put our trust in man's system there, God, but we put our system, our trust in your system. Father God, we thank you right now that the government was able to stay open, Heavenly Father, but we know that that was nothing having to do with man. That was you imparting things into man, Heavenly Father, to take care of your people. So, Father God, we lay aside every weight that we have against ourselves, every yoke, Heavenly Father, that seems like it's burdening us down. We ask that you free us from the yokes of bondage on the day there, God, regardless of what that might be. We ask you to help men and women search their hearts, Heavenly Father, to figure out what it is that they need to do to come to you to be saved. So, Father, on the day, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son that died on the cross for our sins, Heavenly Father, so that we may have a mediator when we are yet judged, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you for all the things that you've done. And even all the things that you're yet going to do. We thank you for your blessings. But most of all, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your um, admonishments that you give us. We thank you for being able to help us to see our wrongdoings, to turn from our wicked ways so that you can do what you've always said that you would do. So, Father God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We ask you to continue to bless Shannon and I and the things that we do in the ministry that you've called us to do. We ask you to bless KRGN and everyone who's involved in that. Everyone that's under the sound of all the people's voices under KRGN, but most importantly, dear God, everyone under the sound of your voice. So, Father God, we just thank you on the day. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so our foundational scripture for Marriage Mondays with the Kings come from the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 6, where it reads, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And of course, our motto for Marriage Mondays with the Kings is helping to build stronger marriages, which leads to stronger families and stronger communities. And so views expressed on our show are those of the host, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. This station holds no responsibility for the validity or accuracy of information on this show. And please keep in mind, although we are counseling professionals, the information shared on our show is for ministry and educational purposes only. Also note, the topics discussed are reflective of supporters who contact us designed to have a deeper knowledge of these topics. No information is shared up on our show based upon our counseling experiences. Topics for the encouragement of marriage, families, and communities as God desires for us to minister. Yes. And so we recently finished family, a series called Family Ain't Family Anymore. Mm -hmm. And so what we did in that series is we kind of broke down some of, or I'm not going to say broke down. I would say identified a lot of the barriers in which is causing families to be divided. But the most recent show that we did, we spoke about how you can get 
you know, I ain't going to say get past, but move forward. Mm -hmm. That's moving forward from family dysfunction and trauma, how you could be healthy, you know, no matter what you have went through in your life. And we've all gone through something in our lives. Okay. No one is perfect. So if you missed that, please go to Marriage Mondays with the Kings YouTube channel. We are also on podcasts and things of that nature when it came to previous shows. But guess what? This is what we're going to be speaking about on tonight, okay? Something that is very important. As we, God continue to allow us, we're talking about seven years mm-hmm. that we're coming up on next month being in radio. God continue to allow us to identify things and dissect what could be some of the hindrances when it comes to marriage. Mm-hmm. And another thing, Kenya and I are going to be very real. God allows us to go through the valleys, Come on, somebody. In our marriage, God, so we're not coming, acting like we're perfect. Y'all know that. We go through things, and once we get through those things, it's like, wow, that's a good show topic. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be talking about on tonight, marriage, why can't we be friends? Yeah, I think it's a a very important topic, and I think it's something that a lot of relationships go through because over time, certain things happen within relationships. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of individuals, if you think back to when you were dating, what that relationship was like compared to now that you're married, there's a lot of reasons why you can't be friends in the marriage, even though you're a husband and wife. Right. And and that's what we're going to be talking about today is breaking that down to understand why can't that continue to carry on? Mm -hmm. If this person was good enough to say, I want you to be my wife wife and you're going to have my children and we're going to do this together or vice versa with the husband, then why can't we be friends in the relationship as well? So we're going to be really breaking that down tonight as uh, the topic says marriage. Why can't we be friends? Yes. And so with that, why can't we be friends? Like Kenya was saying, um, I want to start off by asking those who are married this. Okay. And those who are single, if you're taking notes, write it down. Okay, because one thing just came to mind. I want to look up the definition of friends, Mm -hmm. what the definition actually mean. And I don't know if you actually got that. But um, the thing is, I want you to ask yourself if you're married, what foundation is your marriage built on? Mm. What are the foundations? Oftentimes you've heard Kenya and I speak about God. God should be your major foundation. God should be your covering when it comes to marriage. You know, we know when we look at the diagram of marriage, it is God. And then it's the husband. And our hopes is that the husband, when things, you know, because we know a lot is 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 placed on the husband's shoulders. That's why God created a help me. That's why the wives are there. And so do the husband, do you go to God? Do you pray to God? Do you say, God, as we're talking about, and it's funny, you kind of mentioned this and my mind just went here, so I'm going to go there with it. We talk about the politicians, right? Because mm-hmm. this is election season. Lord Jesus, that's a whole nother show. But this is election season. season. We want our politicians to maneuver a certain type of way. We want them to handle and tackle and do their job and do certain things. So for the husbands, and I'm not beating you up, do you go to God for God to direct you like we want the politicians to go to God for the politicians to direct us? Okay. I don't know where it came from, but just roll with it. Yeah. However, mm-hmm. asking yourself what the foundation is. So us as the wife, we're supposed to be under our husband's covering. Okay. Dagger, husband covering. All right. And then you have your children, you know, and so forth. But a lot of times people compare their marriages with other people. I don't know where we get this idea. We think that everything should be, as we call it in the military, dress, right dress. Your marriage is specific to you. So when this question is asked, what is your foundation? Is friendship with your husband and your wife part of your foundation Mm -hmm. in your marriage? Because yes, we got God, but friendship. Mm -hmm. What did you all start off being? That right there is a perfect identifier of what your marriage may or may not have manifested to, okay? Or evolved to. Let me say that, evolved to. Mm -hmm. So looking at the foundations, how did it get started? Was it a shotgun wedding? Did your family members make you go and say, I do, because you got pregnant? Because, you know, a lot of of people was doing that when we was coming up. You know, Mm -hmm. oh, you get pregnant. Oh, you going to marry her. And it was even worse for our parents and grandparents. So what is your foundation? What is your core? And is friendship being friends one of them? Mm-hmm. And, and that's funny that you said that because that's one uh, one of my number one things in my notes here okay. is that sometimes uh, a friendship 
helps build the foundation for the marriage. Mm. See, a lot of times the things that we're talking about that we want in a marriage oftentimes has to be shown during friendship or courtship or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. So we know which direction that we're going. And I'll just give you a few of the things I have here. Okay. If you think back sometimes in your relationship that you may have had with your, your spouse before you uh, really got serious, y'all were friends, y'all were dating or whatever. Um, some of the things came up to help build your foundation for where you may or may not be right now. So think back to some of the conversations you used to have. When you were first getting together, you could probably talk about just about any and everything. Has that relationship built for it? It didn't matter what it was. Nobody wasn't getting mad at each other. You had your opinion. That person had their opinion. You just kind of respected it. But oh, four, five, six years later in the marriage, everything done changed. Mm. Because sometimes what we do in our relationships, we get complacent. Yes. And we don't feed into it like we should. Mm -hmm. And we think that now that we got this person or the ring is on their finger, I ain't got to do nothing else because I've already did the hard work. Mm. Oh, no, that was the easy part. The <laughs> hard work is still yet to come. Mm, so that could be some of it is building that relationship and, and being able to have that openness in a relationship. This is how I feel. This is what I think. This is the individual that I am. This is how I grew up. That way, both individuals get understanding, but you're communicating with one another so that the lines of communication are open. You're understanding one another. Now you can understand why your spouse may act the way he or she does. It's just a lot that comes from that. Mm -hmm. But all too often, we do become complacent. Now, the last thing I'll say before I get ready to pass it back over to Shan is, you know, when you were friends, a lot of times you had common goals. Right. There may not have been goals together, but that person was like, oh, well, that's what you want to do. Oh, well, if you need something, let me know. I'll help you. I'll do this. I'll do that. But then you get married and like say you get deeper into the marriage. Well, you know, baby, I was thinking about that. Well, if you go do that, you got to do that on your own because I'm not doing this, that and the other. All of a sudden now everything changes. Mm. And what you have to understand is that is the trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. See, the enemy will show you all the good stuff about something in the beginning. And then in the end, he'll flip it on you. He'll say, yeah, I give you the cards. I give you the money. I give you the men, the women, whatever it is that you want. Right. But then later on, that same thing ends up being your downfall. Mm. In this particular case, when you're friends, you need to put all that stuff out front. And then you're able to build on that foundation and keep things moving through. Mm -hmm. You're going to have tests. You're going to have trials. But the thing is not give up and to keep moving forward. Right. Because when God puts something in you, he's not going to snatch it out from under you. Mm, and I remember... Sure. um when we were going to church in Clarksville, our, our pastor at the time uh, said that you have to look at your friends and the people around you as a blessing. Mm -hmm. And most uh, the, the problem is most people don't know what a blessing is. Right. See, the Bible says that a blessing, when, when you have a blessing, it added no sorrow to mm -hmm. it. That doesn't mean that bad things won't come, but it won't get to a point where you're sorry that you even had a, a relationship with this individual, that mm -hmm. y'all even met and things of that nature. It adds no sorrow to it. And so... Ask yourself the question, did I build a foundation of friendship in my relationship? If I did, have I become complacent? And then the very last thing is, what am I investing in my relationship? Wow. See, sometimes you can't be a friend with somebody because you really don't have common goals. Right. You're really not investing in that individual. Maybe you want that person to invest in you and you get the benefits of it, but there's nothing really being put into the relationship so that you get a good outcome or return on the investment. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to you know, do the definition um, or express the definition of a friend. This is coming mm -hmm. from Google, the AI version, and I don't mean Alan Iverson. Um, so basically it says a friend is a person who you know well and like. A friend can also be someone who is on the same side in the struggle, is not an enemy or foe. Mm, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Is not an enemy or foe. Helps or supports someone or something. Has a strong liking for and trust in another has qualities like loyalty, mm, that's lacking these days, mm -hmm. honesty, that one too, and respect. Now, I'm going to keep going here in a second, but loyalty, honesty, and respect, those things right there are very powerful when it comes mm -hmm. to a marriage. Because somewhere in there, the loyalty is lost, the honesty is more lies than truth, and then respect, respect who? Because one of the things that I've learned about a man, I've heard this several times throughout the years. Men desire respect. Husbands desire respect. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I, if I can be honest, sisters, ladies, fellow wives, you do not respect your husband. There are so many 
wives that I have witnessed. And let me say this, me, Shan, I do not like to be in the atmosphere of this type of behavior. It really makes me mad when a woman can set up her belittle and emasculate her husband, talk him down like a dog, but then you expect him to continue to do provide. Imagine somebody, you know, God forbid, kicking on a dog. Every time you emasculate your husband and disrespect your husband, especially in front of other people, you are kicking him. And so people get more upset when somebody kick a dog than when you disrespect your husband. Mm -hmm. But I'll leave that alone. So it says a good friend is someone you can count on, trust and like. Other definitions of friend include a close acquaintance, a supporter, a sympathizer, something thought of as like a friend and being helpful and reliable. Are you reliable to your spouse? A person who you like and enjoy being with. Let me Mm -hmm. pause right there. A person who you like and enjoy being with Mm -hmm. that come on now. And then let me speak this one. A person who is not a family member, it says spouse or lover, but I want to go back to a person that you like or enjoy being with. Some of you are married and you don't even like or enjoy being around each other anymore. But that goes back to the question that I asked, what is your foundation? How did, how did your marriage get started? Mm-hmm. One thing that I could say, Kenya and I, is we were friends. We had a group of friends that we all kicked it with, or whatever the case might be, on deployment, when we came back from deployment. Because, of course, for those of you all don't know, we met while serving in the Army. We were friends first. We had those conversations, those heart-to-heart, vulnerable moment-type conversations. A lot of people, if y'all be honest, let me go ahead and put it out there, because some of y'all won't be honest with yourselves. A lot of y'all marriage start off, started off with, and it's still going on to this day, what you could get out of your spouse versus you investing into your mm-hmm. spouse in your marriage. So you was gold digging. Let me just call it what it was back in the day. Mm-hmm. A lot of marriages was based on sex. That's what it was based on. Oh, this per- oh, I just love them. Y'all was sleeping partners. That's what y'all wasn't praying. <laughs> y'all was sleeping together. And because it was so good, then you like, this is my soulmate. This is the person who I'm supposed mm-hmm. to go with. You ain't saw God. You ain't did a Matthew 6 and 33. The sex was good. I know this is a family show, but let's just come on. The Bible talk about sex. The sex was good. And therefore you said, I do. And then you got into the marriage and guess what it was based off of. But let me tell you this, and we can tell you this in the circle of life. As you get older and things progress on, baby, sex ain't what's going to keep y'all together. Okay. Some of y'all got together because uh, you were forced. Because you may have been in the in the building. And when I say building, I'm talking at the church building. And you had somebody, you was at the altar, somebody that prophesied or prophesied over you talking about your man is coming because everybody know that that's what you want. See, she want a man or your wife is coming because this one just, you know, dumped you or whatever the case may be. And so you fell for it. And what happened? Because we had singles. Remember, we mm-hmm. had our singles on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they were young adults and they was, they was raised in the church. All of them. They was like, please quit playing matchmakers with the singles in the church. Some of y'all are married because Deacon so-and-so, prophet is so-and-so, elder so-and-so, evangelist so-and-so, archbishop so-and-so, whatever these titles are today. That's what, and you still didn't see God. You went along with what this bishop was saying, what this prophet was was saying, or what this minister was saying. But you didn't seek God to say, God, is this the husband or the wife that you created for me? You went along with religion instead of your relationship Mm -hmm. with God, okay? So I'm going to ease off. What you got, Mr. King? No, I think going back to the question, why can't we be friends? Mm -hmm. um, A lot of people can't see the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think if you would take a long, hard dive and look back at your relationship and really be honest about it, you probably can answer that question within your relationship. Mm -hmm. I believe for a lot of individuals, they can't be friends. Like Shan was saying, they were never friends in the first place. That foundation was not built. Mm -hmm. Um, 
another thing is that there, there's no love that's in a relationship. Usually when you have a friend, especially if you have someone you call your best friend, there's some type of love that's there. And it may not be an intimate type of love, right. but just the fact that you care for that person, you want to see what's best for them, you want to help them, you want to support them, whatever the case may be. And in a relationship that you're currently in, that's not the case. Mm. Y'all just got to the, pa- the fact that, oh, well, we're married this way, this way it's supposed to be. And mm-hmm. so you go and I go, that's it. Right. Where is the love that is genuinely there? And then we have to understand that sometimes when you when you're friends, most friends are on the same accord. Right. You're going to have differences. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was growing up, I had a best friend. I had a um, football team I liked. This person had a football team they liked. It may have been different, but we were still friends. We still liked the idea of football or right. sports or something of that nature. See, you have to understand that a lot of individuals, the commonalities don't always have to be there, but as long as you can kind of understand it and work with each other, you can go somewhere. Mm-hmm. But because I like hunting, she despises it. Every time I say something about it, she's putting it down. What do you think that's going to end up doing? That's pushing me in another direction. Right. And then whenever she likes something, I'm going to do the exact same thing because now I want to play tit for tat or retaliate. And we ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And so can we respect one another to say, okay, I understand. My husband grew up that way. He likes to hunt, fish, whatever the case may be. I may not like it, but I'm going to deal with it because it seems like he's happy doing that. And he ain't out here in the club and doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. And then vice versa. I would do, you know, of course, the same thing uh, with her. But we have to get to that point where we have some commonalities about each other. And and I will say this when it comes to respect, because Sharon brought that up. Mm -hmm. I was watching. um, I can't remember which one of the social medias, but there was a guy that was on there and he said these words. He said there is a lot of men today that are in jail for a lack of respect. And I had to think about that for a minute. And then he went on to explain it is that when you're married to a woman or you're dating someone and you start showing them signs of disrespect, especially to a man, that does something to a man on the inside that most people can't understand. Right. And that person feels like I got to gain that respect back in some shape, form or fashion. So if you let's say you're female, not picking on females, it can be male, or female, either way. But let's say there's a male that's dating a female. He's going out with her. They're saying that exclusive. It's just the two of them. Then all of a sudden she starts entertaining other men Mm -hmm. and then does something right in front of her man as well. Oh, that was just flirting. That ain't cheating. That's this, that, and other. Well, that man now feels disrespected. So now he has to do something to gain that respect back. So he can walk up to the dude, sock him in the face and be like, well, why did you hit that person? Well, you just, just, he not go sit here and disrespect me like that. And then when the guy falls over, hits his head on the curb and ends up dead. Now he's in jail because he killed this individual Mm -hmm. all out of this respect. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that when it comes to respect in a relationship, it has to go both ways. Right. And if you can respect one another while you're dating, why don't you carry that over into marriage? Right. Just because you put the ring on that person's finger doesn't mean that everything changes and everything gets flip flop. But that's the exact reason why you can't be friends right now. Mm -hmm. Because when you were trying to get that person, you had to do everything because you didn't want nobody else to have them. But now that (laughs) you got them, now all of a sudden you can start changing stuff. Oh, we don't need to have deep conversations no more. Mm. Oh, you ain't got to sit back and listen to me no more. Why? Because you got 13 of the other girlfriends over there and you'd rather listen to them than listen to your own husband. Husband, and then you wonder why you're not friends because you quit treating each other like you were friends. Yes. Just because the, the ring goes on the finger doesn't mean, oh, we ain't friends no more. We just married. No, that friend thing merges with the marriage because the Bible even tells us the two are better than one. Yes. Yes. That if you fall, your friend should be able to pick you up. Mm-hmm. That's why you have a help me. Right. And I, I'm, I'm not, I ain't prophetic. I ain't trying to go there in any shape, form, or fashion, but I can almost guarantee you. When Adam, when God made Adam and then he turned around and made Eve because that woman came from man, they're already interlocked. Right. They had to be friends. He has or she has something that he once had. There was commonality there and God gave them a common goal. Mm -hmm. But then the minute they let somebody step within that friendship, Mm. that's when everything started to fall apart. Mm -hmm. That friendship that they had working together in the garden, doing what God told them to do. Hey, just don't do this one thing over here. One thing. But then you let somebody else slip in. And that's one of the reasons, another reason why people can't be friends. 
you can't have regular conversations and all this stuff that we talked about with your husband, but you can have it with everybody else. Mm. You can't sit there with your wife and sit down and have a deep conversation about the kids growing up and what we're going to do and all this stuff, but you can run back to work and be talking to all kinds of other females about it. Mm. Our priorities are mixed up. Mm -hmm. We need to build our foundation, which is our home first, and then other other things outside of that get taken care of later on. Right. And so when it comes to friendship, you got to focus on who's your first and true friend. Mm. You know, I was sitting up here, so writing, I'm taking this in and everything as um, we're having a show. So one of the questions I wrote down is this. If you all are not in a good place as husband and wife, and you all do not view each other as friends right now, maybe you did in the beginning, at what point or how did you go from being friends to enemies? Absolutely. Identifying that that issue that came up. Yes. yes you. We, we've been talking about this in the last series. You have to identify it. At what point did you go from being friends to enemies? Because guess what? The first thing that a person, people, period, it's like in our nature to do is blame the other person. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was they fault. Oh, they did this. Oh, I tried to do the best. We're going to put all the goodness on us and all the negativity on our spouse. And we never get a chance if we don't identify what could I have done wrong to make this relationship turn left. I'm going to put this out here and a lot of people are not going to agree with me, but I remember Kenya and I did a show, right? And we know what the word of God says, for example, I'm going to use this as an adultery because it was a previous show we was talking about. And it really made me think when Kenya and I finished the show. And so I remember that you had made mention about um, a lot of times people look at the person, paraphrasing, look at the person who committed the adultery, mm -hmm. but the spouse in whom they married to didn't look at the part that they may have played in it that could have led up to that adultery as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so a lot of people don't like to eat that. You don't like to eat that. You, a lot of people go towards adultery was committed. The word of God says that I can leave this marriage because of adultery. And not to say, this is not always the case. Cause I'm gonna look, I'm a, I'm a, I ain't going to say play devil's advocate. Cause I don't even like that phrase, but I'm gonna look at it from the flip side here in just a second. Uh, because I'm not blaming the spouse and mm -hmm. whom the one that got cheated on. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is identify if it's any role that you could have played in it. A lot of common roles that I used to hear wives say, for example, um, when it came to their marriage and it later ended in, it was dissolved, you know, divorce is, oh girl, I control the sex. Now you know that 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 God made men to be physical beings. You know men like sex. You know uh, your husband likes sex, but you're trying to control and manipulate like the Jezebel spirit when it comes to sex. Oh no, I give it to him. I feed it to him a little bit at a time. That's out of order. That is not of God. But now let me look at the flip part of this when it comes to the adultery piece, right? Because mm -hmm. since I use that as an example, and that's something that hits a lot of marriages and that a lot of marriages, you know, struggle with, because that may be the answer to one of the, the question that we asked, how did you go from friends to enemy? Oh, well, when my spouse slept with somebody else. Okay. So looking at it from the person who committed the adultery, let's go back to this, this five, six week, seven week series that we just did. The person who is the, the, that committed the adultery, what is it about you and having to sleep with someone else? Was it my spouse was belittling me and putting me down, always saying that I'm not good enough, emasculating me? Was it something in your childhood that maybe you could have, you maybe was probably touched as a child and you wrestled with the spirit of lust? Was it the fact that because um, a, a lot of times this is what I've heard males say over the years when it came to adultery. Well, this person and this is not we say this, this is not from the council room. This is common conversations, military conversations, growing up in the hood conversations when I used to listen to the old heads talk. When they would say somebody would say, man, what made you want to go there and sleep with this person? Well, she or he made me feel good. Whereas my spouse didn't. Mm -hmm. So my thing is when it comes to why can't we be friends, bringing it back around, why would I want to hurt my friend? Why would my, when I think of friendship, I think of someone that you could be vulnerable with. You don't have to put up walls like you do with the outside world. You don't have to put up walls like when you go to church, when you go to work or whatever the case may be, you and your organization that you belong to. 
with your friend, I can be vulnerable. I can share my heart. I don't have to worry about hearing it again in the streets. I don't have to worry about you getting mad at me and throwing it up in my face in an argument. Because a lot of you are saying the reason why you thinking it, you may be saying the reason why me and my spouse are no longer friends is because when we get to arguing that which I've shared with them being vulnerable. They throw it up in my face. Mm -hmm. A lot of men say that. A lot of women say that. So we really need to get to the core of what happened with you no longer being friends. And then I'm going to say this because I know, Ken, you got something. A lot of us can can no longer be friends because we put on this front when we first was dating and courting mm -hmm. each other of being friends. I'm trying to change and be everything that you want me to be, especially women. I could speak as a wife so I could get that ring so you could propose so I could be Mrs. or whatever the case may be. So you put on the front to try to be that good friend. Mm hmm. But the reality is the reason why a lot of how we went from um, friends to being enemies or why can't we be friends in this marriage thing is because a lot of you are not even friends with yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, nobody want to hear that. You don't know how to be a friend. The word of God says, and I and I have it in scripture, but I don't want to be like going through trying to search. Her, but we know the word of God says in order for you to gain a friend, you got to first be friendly. Mm -hmm. Show yourself friendly. You got to show yourself friendly. And a lot of us are not showing ourselves friendly in our marriage, but we desire for our spouse to be our friend. And then we get mad because you're not being a friend the way that I want you to be a friend. But in reality, baby, you don't even know. <laughs> what being a friend is because you're not even nice to yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So chew on that one. Yeah, that's a good one. And, you know, I heard you saying a lot of stuff there. And, you know, one of the things that can get down to that question, why can't we be friends, is sometimes we're more friendly with other individuals than we are our own spouse. Come on. Come, oh, my God. You know, you're sitting my up God, in the house, God. you get ready to go out to eat or whatever, and it's like ho-hum, the same old stuff. But then when you get in front of everybody else, all of a sudden you become the life of the party, you're mm. bubbly, you're mm -hmm. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the spouse mm -hmm. is sitting back like, I ain't never seen that side before. Why is this? Right. Why can't you show that same attention, that same love or whatever the case may be with your spouse? that you do with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's identifying at what point did that change? Right. I can definitely agree with Shan. There's a lot of individuals, men and women both, when I'm trying to date you and get you, I'm going to say all the right stuff and do everything. But then mm -hmm. once I got you, everything changes. Mm -hmm. But what we have to understand is in our relationships, when it comes to marriage, you continue, you, you still need to continue to be friends because when you were friends first, that helps build that foundation that you build up on when it comes to the marriage. Right. Those are the things you have to take a look at. And so for a, a lot of people, we have to understand a lot of times we can't be friends anymore because we change. Mm -hmm. Now, change is inevitable. Right. Everything is not going to stay the same. And when I talk about we change, it's because once again, it goes back to it's a separation that has been put in place like a wall, if you will, between being friends and dating and courting and all that stuff and then getting married. Mm -hmm. So I can just be honest with you. I know there's been times when Shan and I, when we were dating, uh, we would sit back and I remember she woke up one morning and said, I can't believe I look like this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it don't bother me. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. I don't expect you to have make go to sleep with makeup on and camp, you know, wake up with it. It's not like that. Right. But then later down the road in the relationship, we'll say dumb stuff like, why don't you look like you used to? You know, really, the looks <laughs> ain't changed that much. It's, it's how you perceive that look to be. Mm. So if you need a pretty face and a bunch of makeup and fake wigs and all that stuff just to feel that you're a friend or close to your spouse. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. That ain't going to keep going because we all age. We all go have some changes about us. We don't right. deal with change well as human beings, but that's something that we got to be able to accept. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the other part of that when it comes to change. Uh, it can't be one sided. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I, I'm going to get on the soapbox for a minute. And I'm not saying this is always the case, but men, you can't expect your woman to be a dime piece of coat ball and all this stuff uh -uh, after she done sir. had three, four, five kids. Hmm. But then you sitting up in the house with a beer gut, sitting in a, in a uh, wife beater. Looking like uh, a kid. Yeah, looking like a kid. <laughs> 
it, it's, it's got to go both ways. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is this, and Sham will tell you, she came to me one time and said, well, I just don't feel like I, I'm, I'm as attractive as I am because I've had, I hold, hold up. Number one, let, let's go ahead and talk about the reason why you got five kids. Was I not a part of that? Right. So I have to accept what going because a woman's body goes through so many different changes every time she has a child. Right. And so if I'm going to sit here and complain because you got a little pooch or something like that, then I got to point the finger back at me because I took part in giving you that. Pouch. Come on, come on, come on. Sir. So it's we have kidding. to look past the body. Right. And look at the person. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why we can't be friends in our relationships. Because when you first met that individual, that friendship part, you saw that friend, you saw that person. But now you've been with this person for a long period of time, you lost sight of that. Right. We don't see that person in that same realm that this is the person that I was head over heels with at 18, 22, 25, or 30. But now that we're 50, it just ain't the same anymore. Mm -hmm. No, it's the same. You just got to bring it out. Mm -hmm. Your friendship. In your marriage with your spouse is just like a campfire. If you don't add some wood to it, it's going to burn out. Right, right. Then how do you stay warm? How do you cook? How do you have protection if that fire is gone? And a lot of people say, well, we need a spark. We need this. Now, some of y'all need a flamethrower. <laughs> just going to be honest. Some of y'all need some fire real right. quick. Throw some gas on it. Strike the match. Jesus. Woo. But what I will tell you is if you put that same energy and the treating your spouse the way you do right now, the way that you did when y'all first started dating, I guarantee you that spark will come back. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you there'll be some flash, bang, pop, whatever it is you want to call it, is going to be there because you can reignite things. Right. Some people can't be friends. I'm just going to be honest because they don't really want to reignite nothing. Mm -hmm. They may like the fight, the light, the fight that the, uh, the flame is burnt out a little bit. But what do we got to do to remain friends? Right. A lot of times, it's just going back. Do the things you used to do. Have fun with one another. Open up. Talk to individuals. Trust that individual. If something has been done in the past or trust, loyalty, communicate, any of that is being broken, rebuild it. Right, right, right. And then I'm going to say this last thing because I know I've been on my soapbox for a while. It's funny to me that we treat our marriages, our relationships, like it's an object. Mm. So the blender breaks down in the relationship. I mean, it breaks down in the kitchen. You just run off and go buy another blender. You get a car uh, that breaks down. The mechanic says it's going to take so many thousands of dollars to fix it. Oh, I'm not putting that in all that. I'd rather just go get something new. We do our spouses the same way. Mm. Instead of looking at something that's saying, you know what? Can this be fixed? Can we take this to someone that can show us to how to put this part back in? Can we give somebody to give us some ideas, a life hack on how to keep this going? No, we're so quick to throw things away and think that can't, things can't go back to being the way that they are, but we won't do it in our relationship. Right. We'll take an old car that's sitting up in a barn and restore it mm -hmm. because we know it has value, but we won't do that same thing with our relationship when we've been there 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right, right. If you can restore an old car and find parts for it, you can do the same thing for your relationship. If you can go back and say, oh, I can dress this way and my man will have his eyes on me, you can do that same thing then. If men, you have to say, I can start working out or going walking or something, you can do the same thing. This is the key issue. We do the things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. When it's mm -hmm. beneficial for us, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. just, just like when we have all these men trips and girlfriend trips or whatever, Six months before, all of a sudden, now you want to go on a diet and start lifting weights and working out because you want to look good <laughs> on that girl's trip or that man's trip. Mm. But what are you really telling your spouse at that point? Mm. I'd rather do this for somebody else, but I won't do it for you. Wow. That's where that disrespect comes in. Mm. That's why you can't be friends. If you can look good on day one, you need to look gay on day 30. Mm -hmm. Do it for yourself, which is important, but do it for your spouse as well. Right. That's where true friendship comes in. And then the last thing is this. If somebody is your true friend, and I'm talking to husbands and wives, mm -hmm. you can't be mad when they tell you something that you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of reasons why you can't be friends in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Because you can pick out everything that's wrong with your spouse, but they can't say nothing to you. Right. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay. So this is what I was thinking about. And it's, listen, you know, Kenya and I, like we said, are very transparent. We literally just had this conversation, what, a month ago? Mm -hmm. So... A lot of times we get into our marriage and we do good, 
the kids, let's just kind of look at this from the beginning. You get in your marriage, you say, I do. Maybe you both go agree that your career, hey, we're going to establish careers or we're going to finish a degree or whatever the case may be, get ourselves set up financially. A lot of people say that before we start to build our family, especially if you're younger. Mm -hmm. So you talking about when we got married, I was 20, he was 27. We were already in our careers. He had a child, I had a child, right? And so what happens is that once that circle of life or cycle, life cycle starts, you start to build your family. And then, of course, the focus then goes from the two of you, this is what generally happened, to build these kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, they in every sport. We have at parent teacher conferences. Uh, uh, they in this at the church. They in you know this organization, whatever the case may be, and that's the focus. A lot of times, the why can't we be friends? The friendship stop, and then the focus goes from you all checking in as friends mm -hmm. to these kids, and then you don't date. You don't get away. Just the two of you. We say this all the time. Trust me. King can let y'all know, I've told y'all before, when it came to our children, especially, you know, being military, you're moving from place to place, all this kind of stuff. We, I did not play. We didn't play. I did not play about our kids. I've said some things, some, some threatening things <laughs> to caregivers. Like, don't let nothing happen to my child, please. Guard our children as if they was your own. Because mm -hmm. if something happened to my child, I'm coming after you. You know, I told these people, and they was laughing, and I was looking at them like, I'm not playing with you. So you put so much into your children that sometimes that's where your friendship fizzle. Absolutely. Now, mm. some of y'all may say, well, we go on dates. Well, we get, because this is what we had to learn. So hopefully we helping somebody on tonight. I don't give a, a, a John Brown how long you've been married, okay? Mm -hmm. But Kenya and I, I think by the time you retire from the military, is what I'm thinking it was. We had a conversation like, no, it was our good friends. We started going to, going away once a year. Mm -hmm. And we had a what we called a shout out to the all homies, our all homies trip, where mm -hmm. we would go on a cruise. And these were for some co um, co-workers. This was adults only, husband and wives. If you were single, whatever, you know, we you bunk up in rooms, whatever the case may be. And we just had a good time. And then from that, it's it, we was like, wait a minute. We need to start taking a family vacation once a year. Mm -hmm. So we started building that. And then as time going along, mind you, we successful in our careers, got the degrees. We're doing all the things. We're trying to run with these kids, full-time ministry in the church. And I'm going to be honest. This is where she ain't got to be honest because I'm not going to lie to y'all. We were so busy ripping and running, as we say in the country, doing everything else for everybody else, that that's where some of our friendships started to shift. Mm, we forgot about ourselves. Yes. And we start going from friends to enemies. Because it's like, what? You doing what? You got to take a... Uh? And we wasn't checking in. We used to check in. We used to do what we call our version of AAR. For those of you served in the military after action review, we would check in once a year and say, at least once, twice a year and say, hey, what is it, me as a wife, what can I do better? What do you want, you know what I'm saying, more of when it comes to me? What do you want less of? And he used to ask the same questions. So it was checks and balances. Some of us, our lives are out of balance mm -hmm. right now. We are burnt out to the max because we're trying to be everything for everybody else. Okay, so let's go on. The kids start to graduate. They start to get out of school. The, no, no, no knock to the, to the husbands and wives or whoever. Y'all be in them restaurants. We told y'all, look around. Men can't do that all the time. We do be looking around. And they just sitting here, either they on their phone. They not having no conversation, no dialogue, no flirting, none of that stuff. Oh, and that, Go ahead, Bill. No, that's a good one because... That that brings to mind the fact that we've lost the humanistic side of um, relationships. Yes. See, I know she was probably going somewhere with it, but it just <laughs> it's hit okay. me. Go ahead. When we were going out to eat and we're sitting there in restaurants and we see people on phones and stuff, see, that's the reason why your husband and wife can't be your friend because you know why? 
you got about 5,000 of them on your uh, your Instagram mm. because they're going to tell you what you want to hear and all that stuff. And when your husband or your wife try to tell you what you need to hear, mm. now that becomes a problem. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, you got to run back and say, oh, just had an issue with my husband. What do you guys think about this? Sir. They ain't living in your house. They ain't paying on your Jesus. taxes. You ain't got no mm. kids with them. Mm. You worried about what all these people think instead of the person that you're living with Come supposed to be trying on. to get goals and things of that nature. Yes. I would say today that is one of the biggest reasons why husbands and wives in certain age groups can't be friends because you got too many of them on here and you only got one in the house, but that one ain't good enough for you. Mm-hmm. Jesus, we're going to tell the ushers to come forward with mm-hmm. the offering play because that right there hit somebody. So I felt it in my spirit. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting. We do not prioritize our friendships. <laughs> That's Hello. what I wrote down. We don't prioritize. And so, you know, Okay, and having a conversation, Kenya and I had, and you know, it was a uh, what our old bishop used to call a, a heated moment of passion. Let's mm-hmm. just be real with the people, okay? That's what we do because see, this is the thing: people are not having. Let me let me sidebar real quick. People are not having real conversations like this. This is what helped people grow. This is what helped you identify yourself. And before the pandemic, everybody was looking for perfection. Mm -hmm. Everybody was trying to be perfection, but now we're dealing with reality Mm post-pandemic and people are not looking for perfect people. They looking for truth. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you, if God has put it on your heart to be a truth teller, speak the truth. Okay. Especially in love. Now, one of the things we was, when we was having our heat and moment of passion was like, cause I remember King said, you know, we, we, we're professional. We doing this. We got businesses. We got blah, 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 blah. The end of our conversation was this. We stopped being friends. Our focus was everything else. And where people mess up as well is you allow people to be in your ear Mm -hmm. like the serpent was in Eve's ear. Mm -hmm. That's why husbands and wives are stopped being friends. One thing where I used to con- get condemned of people, let me tell you, let me tell you about this to help free somebody on the day. Cause I was literally in bondage. My husband would ask me to wear certain things and it wasn't nothing disrespectful. Shared that with y'all before. Nothing disrespectful. Baby, I like to see you in this. Baby, can you wear some heels? Baby, can you wear this skirt? This is what he's asking me, but I was too busy allowing myself to be condemned by the church folks. Let me talk to the saints. Let me say it like that. And when I say church folks, I'm talking about the people who are in the building who your marriages is messed up because if your marriage wasn't as messed up, you would be minding your own business Mm. and you would be praying for your brother and sister in Christ and their marriage instead of trying to interject your two cents because, oh, you a deaconess. You shouldn't dress like that when you go out with your husband. Okay. This was my husband. It wasn't nothing like you see these video vixens. No, respectful. And that's what he even told me. Baby, I understand we got sons, but I want to see my wife. This is what my husband telling me. But I was too busy worried about what the saints would think. Baby, let me tell you this. Shan is free and no longer in bondage from people. I'm, this is my friend. This is my husband. We be here. Anybody that's ever been around us out in public, we've had people ask us, if are y'all newlyweds? Did y'all just get married and we bust out laughing? No, we've been married 24 years. What? Because we flirt with each other out in public. This is my man again. This is my husband. So saints, let me holler at y'all for a minute. A lot of y'all stop being friends because y'all been running after people who are in these title positions in the ministry and you are trying to get approval from them. Instead of your spouse, them don't pay your bills. Okay. So some of y'all pastors, leaders, y'all going to get upset, but somebody need to teach the people. This is why we've had this, um, show title about marriages in the church Mm -hmm. and why so many divorces in the church. This is why, this is why, how do I know we was almost there? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. We were almost there. Because I'm being condemned by the saints. Because saints are disrespecting my husband. So that helped ruin our friendship. We was almost a statistic of divorce. Okay? So get your house in order. 
In the New Testament, it speaks about and talking to, it was specifically to the males. But if you're going to be in this position in the church, your home need to be in order. Before you used to be a deacon in the church back in the day, mm -hmm. the pastor would ask, is your home life in order? Let me speak to your wife. Let me speak to your kids before putting you in this position. So friendship is often ruined. And why can't we be friends in our marriage? Because we're no longer applying biblical principles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When it comes to our marriage. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people aren't friends in their marriage because that's not the title you really want. Sir, I think I can't breathe. Yeah. Oh my God. So Let me you you run that run, down. You will run after the title of NCO officer, what that may be. It may be bishop, deacon, whatever, mayor, CEO. it doesn't matter. Mm. You're running after all of that, but you forget about the person who's supposed to be your help me. Mm. You can still do that with that person on your side. Yes. And, and I'll just I'll give you a good example. My wife at one point was involved in an organization. Mm -hmm. I told her from the giddy up, as we say in the country, I didn't really like it. But that's what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Guess where I found myself at? Several different occasions at some of those conferences. Mm -hmm. Volunteering, doing whatever, because if this was going to be something that she liked and this was a goal, I was going to support that. Right. Because a lot of times people can't go somewhere. You can't get to that appointed time and that appointed place that God has for you if you run in one way and your help meet is running another way. Mm -hmm. That's what that support is all about. So if she wants to end up being CEO or whatever, then she's going to be the CEO there. And my goals, I should be able to get to them as well. It's all about creating balance and helping one another out to be able to get there. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that too often in our relationships. Right. Another reason why we can't be friends is because you're looking at other people's friends, uh, husbands, and really want them to be your best friend. <laughs> You want them to do the things that they do with their spouse, this, that, and other, because you won't do it for your spouse. And I'll My give you God. guys a good example. Okay. Shannon and I went to a barbecue one time. She comes up and says, baby, uh, do you want me to make your plate? And I was like, no, I'm good. I'll get it. Don't worry about it. The guy looked at me and was like, wait, she just offered to make your plate, man. I wouldn't turn that down. I would do this. Well, that's the difference. Mm. My wife will offer me that, but she, that's not a requirement for me. <laughs> if that's a requirement for you and your spouse, Teach then the that's people. what y'all do. That's yes. why it's not wise to compare yourself come, amongst come. each other. Mm. So, My and and I, I'll break it down even further. There's 13 or 14 houses in our subdivision. Mm -hmm. They all got roofs and foundations. Right. They're all different on the inside. Come on. Our relationships are the same way. We probably all got rings, all said I do, but what made up that relationship is very different. What works for you and your relationship may not work for somebody Come else. On. You can't force that over on another individual. Jesus. That's why Shannon and I can give you some things that may help you in your relationship, but in certain cases, it's not going to work for everybody. Right. All of our accounts all ran together. Mm -hmm. Some individuals say, well, we have separate accounts. Do you, boo? If one person has a problem spending, well, guess what? I'm going to put $100 in there for you. Once that's gone, don't come for nothing else. <laughs> that works for y'all. Right. But you can't expect your spouse to be exactly like somebody else because you really don't know what that person is like. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that from experience. I had a lot of people come up and tell me, women, oh, I wish my husband was like you. No, you don't. Mm. Cause you don't, you ain't seen everything Kenya done been through. You ain't mm. seen everything that Kenya done had bad about him that he had to change and, and see a different way. That he had to go before God and say, "Okay, yeah, I know I messed up. I did this. That ain't like me. Forgive me. Let me get on the right track." You don't see all of that, right? Right. right. You get that outward appearance, mm -hmm. and that leads me into this segue. Some of us can't be friends in our relationship because we're too much worried about the outward appearance of an individual. Mm. We're not looking at the person's heart like we used to. Mm -hmm. What made you fall in love? with that man or that woman? What really drew you to them? Go right. back to those things there. And I guarantee you, you can start getting back on the track to your friendships. But all too often, we start focusing on the other stuff. Right. Uh, he used to hold my hand. He used to do this, that, and the other. Well, guess what? What is it that you used to do that you ain't doing no more? <laughs> It's always woulda, shoulda, coulda, but let's stop Come for a minute. On. And when both people realize that they both have fallen down in some areas, yes. then just start just start strengthening those areas. Right, right, That's right. That's all you have to do to get that flame back so that you can call one another friends. Yes. I have witnessed a lot of people get married. I witnessed a lot of people get divorced. I witnessed some individuals that have lost their husbands and wives that are now widows, widowers, things of that nature. And a lot of them all say the same thing. When it came to that loss, they would say this word, I lost my best friend. Yeah. Yeah. 
Why does it take for us to get to that point where we have to lose somebody in death, divorce, or whatever the case may be to realize that that was my best friend when they were your best friend all along? Mm -hmm. Why can't we rekindle mm -hmm. those fires when we yet have that opportunity to so that doesn't get to that point? Because mm -hmm. I know this. I don't know when my day is going to come when God calls me home and God forbid, vice versa. Mm -hmm. But I know that I will always say if that is, that's my best friend. Right. That is a wife. That is a mother. She's an author. She's a clinician. She's this, she that. But more importantly, that's my spouse. My spouse is my best friend. Mm -hmm. And when we get that back in our mindset of who our best friend should be and how we should treat them and how we should be working together, I think things will fall in line. But all too often, we get off the road a little bit. Right. We take a little bit of a detour. Mm -hmm. Every detour is going to eventually get to your destination. It may take you longer to get there, but you can get there. Right. The right. question that you have to ask yourself, are you listening to the directions? Mm. Wow. Because all too often, Siri, uh, uh, I can't think of the- uh, Alexis, uh, some, Siri, Somebody Google. in the car tells you, Make a right at the next exit. Right. And you're like, no, no, no. I think I can get through this way. Then when you end up in a traffic jam, I should have made that right. Right. Sometimes those voices in our head, God talking to us saying, don't do this, do that. Listen to your spouse. Rekindle that fire. Take her out on a date. Hold her hand. Put her on the, out, uh, the inside of the street, not the outside. Walk around. Open the door up for her. All that little stuff will get those friendships back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to go back to the things that got that individual in order to be able to keep that individual. Yeah. And, and once again, that's not just on men. That's on that's on everybody all the way around. Sometimes we have to do some of those old things. I'm not asking you to do anything unethical or moral or anything of that nature. Sometimes we got to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. The basics of dating. Before you had all that money. Before you had that BMW. Yes. Sham will tell you, I'm the same right now as I was way back then. There was a point in my life where I was pretty much broke. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was her birthday and I knew what her birthdays were, were like before we even met. And I said, well, I'm not going to let that go by. I can't miss her birthday. The last little bit of money I had in the account, I went to the commissary, bought some food, cooked it and made her a dinner. And I couldn't even, Christmas lights around couldn't the even afford it. <laughs> couldn't even afford candles and put Chris, tape Christmas lights around it was the cute. table. <laughs> but. I will still do that right now. It's a lot different. I, my finances are a whole lot better, pretty much thanks to her. But guess what? She came home yesterday, uh, the other day from an event. Did you eat? No, I didn't eat. I already had some made. Grilled some chicken on the grill, made her a salad, cut it all up, made it look nice and neat, put her something to drink over there on the couch so she can sit and eat after she had been at that conference for the majority of the day. But still doing little things. The little things. The little things yeah. that count. Yes, yes. So what I wanted to do is I want to say two quick things because, of course, we're coming towards the end um, of our show. I wanted to point out this, singles, because, you know, we never leave out the singles. When you are in a relationship with someone you're dating and you're courting, we highly encourage you to not rush through the friendship phase. Yes. Because a lot of times, you know, and it's not just we're not acting like we better because we marry, but a lot of times individuals will go from uh, uh, being single to meeting someone and then you having sex with them. And that's what you let drive your marriage and it actually destroys it. So don't see them in all seasons. Mm -hmm. See them. You know, no, have enough worth in yourself to know if you're actually ready to commit to marriage. Marriage is, um, I'm going to say it like this. Y'all ain't going to like it, but, but research in the Bible, because I just learned this last weekend. Uh, one of the uh, doctors, a male said this. I said, Ooh, that was powerful. He was sharing. I think I had three or four marriages. Mm -hmm. So he, he, what he learned marriage is, is man-made. Holy matrimony is God made. Oh, that's good. Okay. That's Let me good. say that again. Mm. Marriage is man made. Holy matrimony is God made. All right. So, and then I'm also say this, when it comes to you being friends, God will, especially if you pray, encamp the both of you all. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. honey. No, you're good. Encamp the both of you all with friends. You'll have a circle of friends that will speak life into your marriage. Mm -hmm. They will pray for your marriage. They will let you know whether you husband or wife. Hey, bro, come here. Come here. Come here. Hey, man, you messing up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, sis, uh uh, I love you. Get through. I've had my friends tell me this, my girlfriends. I ain't going to shout out their names because I didn't get permission. Get through your little pity party. You're going to be all right. You not going to work. Give yourself time to calm down and then y'all go back and get it right. That's it. <laughs> so, 
who you have in your circle of friends should be people that are God sent, that you can be vulnerable with, and they are for your marriage, not secretly against it. Absolutely. And so I want to go ahead and read the thought of the week because we are coming down to a close. And it reads, a good marriage is about being each other's confidant and best friend. Mm -hmm. A successful marriage is founded on a deep friendship that can weather any storm. And that comes from FSM statistics. Mm. I also want to go back. I know there's a Bible scripture that says uh, there's no greater man than he that lays down his life for his friend. Right. That's not always talking about laying down your life in a death state. It's about sometimes putting yourself aside so that somebody else is able to help that individual out. Mm. You're able to help that person. One reason why some people can't be friends is because we can't quit thinking more about me than it is about the other individual. Mm. A true friend will sometimes say, I will stop what I'm doing to help this individual to help them achieve the goal. And then they will stop and come back and do the exact same thing. Right. So who are you pouring into? Right. And so Marriage Mondays with the Kings is brought to you by a sponsor, Christian Himmel forward slash inspiration. This is a group that is designed to uplift, inspire and bring Bring, bring, bring humor to everyday life mm-hmm. in a Christian way. So if you're in the Facebook, please go to social media, search them, Christian Humor forward slash inspiration. If you are an organization or a business and you would like to be broadcasted during our show or in KRGN 98.5 FM, The Rock, please give KRGN a call at 254-213-1588. That is our show for tonight. We ask that you all join us back next Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and well, whatever it is that God placed on our heart, that's what we're going to bring. And it's going to be the truth in his name. Amen. So as always, keep it locked right here on KRGN 98.5 FM, The The Rock. Rock.